Shalom, brothers and sisters. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from Yahuwah the Father and Yahusha our Mashiach, his voice. Hear, O Yasharal, Yahuwah our Mighty One, he is one Yahuwah. This is Brother David coming to you again to bring you death. Were we not warned? But of course we do not listen. In Deuteronomy 28, it tells us because we have moved away from the law, because we're going to serve gods of wood and stone, that all of these curses will come upon us. Some of these curses are sickness. He said, that even some of these sicknesses that are not even written in the book of the law, them shall he put upon us. He is not lying. In comes death. Let's begin. Coronavirus fatality rates higher for blacks. Let's start with Louisiana. Of the 512 coronavirus-related deaths in Louisiana, about 360, or 70%, were African-American patients. 360 out of 512, brothers and sisters. Despite the fact that blacks compromise less than a third of the state population. How can this be? Let's take a look at another. Illinois, Chi-Town, Chicago. In Illinois, there were 13,549 Corona cases Tuesday and 380 deaths. According to the state's Department of Public Health of the confirmed, we're only looking at what's been confirmed so far, 28.4% were black, 27.1% were white, 10% were Hispanic, 3.3% Asian, 25.7% were unknown. I bet you this 25.7% is going to go to the blacks and the whites. Of the deaths, 42.9% were black. Almost half. 36.1% were white. 8.4% Hispanic. 6.8% unknown. And 3.7% Asian. Roughly... 15% of the state's population is black, while whites make up 77% of the state according to the census. This is incredible. You may see this is a low number, but look, we're only 15% of the state's population, brothers and sisters. Whites make up 77%. Hmm. Judgment is upon us. Michigan. In Michigan, the numbers were also bleak. African Americans account for 14% of the state's population. But 33% of COVID-19 cases... And 40% of deaths were black. Hmm. Remember, 14% of the state's population, 14% brothers and sisters, which leaves 86%. But yet, we're one third. Of the cases, 
and almost half of the deaths. This is very bad. New York City. In New York City, the epicenter, the coronavirus pandemic is killing Hispanics and African Americans at a disproportionate pace compared with their representation in the city's population. According to the preliminary data issued Wednesday by Mayor Bill de Blasio, I don't have the exact numbers for you, but look at the word disproportionate. I bet you is soaring brothers and sisters. You know, in New York City, where I lived for many, many years, the Hispanics and the African Americans, they're together, you know. We live in the same impoverished neighborhoods. We mix with one another. We party with one another. And we're dying with one another. Blacks' health conditions increase coronavirus complications. Many of those who died of the coronavirus disease in Louisiana had a pre-existing medical condition. Here are the percentages. Hypertension, 66.4%. That's high blood pressure. If you catch the coronavirus and you're fighting high blood pressure, it's more likely that you can die from this. Diabetes, 43.5%. Chronic kidney disease, 25.1%. Obesity, 24.7%. Cardiac disease, 2.7%. Pulmonary, 14%. Congestive heart failure, 11.5%. Neurological issues, 10.9%. Cancer, this is my category. I have a form of leukemia, which they really know nothing about. 9.9%. They told me six years ago, that I had to take a drug called hydroxyurea. If I didn't take it, I would die. What hydroxyurea does is it's a chemo drug and it lowers your immune system. Now you're not able to fight off anything. Anyone who, is, who has cancer, anyone who is going to take chemo, it's destroying your immune system. They can't fight off this corona virus. Asthma, 4.7%. You can't breathe from the beginning. Just think if you catch this coronavirus. This is one of my problems that comes with my condition. Hard to breathe. I've been dealing with that for six years, but I'm still here alive. I treat myself with natural things. Anything that they give you that destroys your immune system is not good, brothers and sisters. Your immune system allows your body to fight off any foreign bacteria, virus, anything that comes your way. A strong immune system is better than a weak immune system, correct? All of these people have weak immune systems. They're fighting every day. The immune system is overtaxed. This is why I gave you echinacea. It's a strong antiviral, natural, from the ground. It's a flower. Here's another benefit. It strengthens the immune system. It doesn't destroy any good bacteria or any bacteria that you need in your digestive system. It just destroys foreign invaders. And it strengthens your immune system so you can fight them off more readily. Isn't that something that you want? And remember, it's the only thing that you have. This is a prophylaxis. It's a preventative measure to keep you from catching this so-called coronavirus. 
we have so many people out there who are saying such craziness. Black people don't catch it and, you know, all of these different things. Now we know that's not true, brothers and sisters. We see our people are topping the lists of the deaths. Why is this happening to us? Well, in Deuteronomy 28, it says all of these diseases will come upon you. Why? Because we are calling upon the name of false gods. We are serving these false gods. We are blaspheming the name of Yahuwah all day long in the lands of our captivity. We have turned away from the law and we have turned away from our mighty one. Therefore, we are not under the hedge of his protection. I mean, taking echinacea is good and using vitamin C coupled with the echinacea will also strengthen your immune system. But if you have not returned to Yahuwah, you still don't have a chance. Revelation chapter 22 verse 14. This is for all of the Christians and the people who don't believe in keeping the commandments. Well, if you want to make it into the kingdom, this tells you right here. This is the last chapter in Revelation. This is the end. Blessed are those are they that do his commandments. Did it say cursed? He said blessed. Hmm. What is the benefit? That they may have the right to the tree of life. The tree of life is life eternal and may enter in through the gates of the city. Only way you're going to make it into his kingdom is if you keep in these commandments. Get that in your head. Not violating his commandments. Not calling upon another God. That's one of his commandments. You're not to have any other gods before him. It would be prudent for you to learn his name. His name is in the book, but you have to go to the original language to find it out because the books that we have today are translations from our enemies. Verse 15, look who's outside of the kingdom. For without are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, all of these in which we were before we began to keep his commandments. Murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh the lie. You know who that is? It's pointing to that church. They love Jesus. They love that Jesus abolished the law. They love that Jesus allows them to eat pork chops and shellfish. They love that Jesus has given them a free reign. They can do whatever they want to because once saved, always saved. That is the biggest lie on the planet. If you're not keeping the Father's commandments because that is His ways, that is your beacon of light that would lead you to the kingdom. If you're not doing that, you are finished. Those people who died already, I saw a video of one of the people, he was a pastor, a very well-known pastor. I forgot his name, and even if I did know his name, I wouldn't mention it anyway. But he made a video talking about his faith in Jesus Christ, and that he knows that Jesus Christ is going to bring him through the next day he was dead. That is the penalty for calling upon these false gods. Everyone that you know today that has succumbed, everyone who is on no statistics, I can almost guarantee you they are all Christians. And if they're not Christians, they're Muslims. Do you hear me? And they're calling upon the name of false gods. This is why we're cursed with these plagues. They will come upon you. But once you turn to Yahuwah, you are under the hedge of his protection. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now, Yahuwah himself poured out these plagues upon the earth. Look at this. Revelation chapter 7 verses 1 to 3. 
The word revelation means an unveiling. Let's see what we shall unveil here. Verse 1. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of Yahuwah. What is the seal of Yahuwah? His Sabbaths, his feast days. It shows that you're on his time, his laws. It shows that you're under his ways, his name. We have gone through the process of transliteration ourselves and we have discovered the name. We have seen also the slave ship manifest and our ancestors that came over here in ships were named after Yahuwah. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. What did he say? Verse 3, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of Yahuwah in their foreheads. Who is he sealing in their foreheads? Only his servants. You have to serve him, which means you have to feed his flock also. Take every chance that you can get to teach the truth. Now, this is Revelation chapter 7. Everything was halted here until his servants were sealed in their foreheads. Nine chapters later, Revelation chapter 16 you find that there are seven angels who have the bowls of wrath in their hands. We're only going to deal with the last two angels, which are speaking about our time. How do I know it's our time? Look at the sixth angel. He poured out his wrath upon the river Euphrates. And the scripture says, and the river dried up. All you have to do is go to Google, brothers and sisters you'll find out that the river Euphrates is drying up. We're watching this happen in real time. Is this a coincidence? This book was written 2,000 years ago, yet it described what is happening right now perfectly. Okay, so we know that the river Euphrates is drying up. Once you check it out, you'll prove it to yourself. Then it says he poured out, the seven angel poured out his bowl upon the air. Here comes this coronavirus. How is it contracted? Through the air. Why do you think they want you to wear masks so you don't breathe it in? Is this a coincidence? That this thing is worldwide because the air is worldwide, isn't it? That's what a pandemic means. Worldwide. Is this a coincidence? How about this? 400 years after we've been in captivity, in comes this coronavirus, this plague that has gone rampant around the world, especially in the places where we have been taken captive. Is that a coincidence? Okay, I've given you three coincidences. Can we dismiss this? Is this fiction? We got people dying. Is this a simulation for something that's going to come next? The book describes it perfectly. People are just listening to YouTube videos. Am I adding to the confusion by showing you what the book says? Well, this book is playing out in real time. This book, prophecies that are in this book are perfect. We've been taken captive. We've been here 400 years. And after this 400 year period, bingo, all this stuff begins to play out. Am I cherry picking scriptures? Well, the Bible tells you how you have to present it line upon line, 
precept upon precept, one scripture here, another scripture there. Am I the devil? I was accused of being the devil. Let me ask you a question. Does the devil teach you to call upon the name of Yahuwah? The name that has been hidden in the Hebrew text for years. Does the devil teach you how to transliterate from the Hebrew into English so you can prove it to yourself? Does the devil tell you to keep Yahuwah's laws? Does the devil teach you Yahuwah's ways? How to find Yahuwah's Sabbaths, his feast days? There's only one way to find Yahuwah's Sabbaths and feast days, and it's in the book. All of the other people who have come with their different Sabbaths, their different feast days, none of them are in the book. How do I know this? I've checked. I've compared each one to scripture and spent two years doing it. I've given up riches to serve Yahuwah. I'm like the man who found a pearl of great price and sold everything that he had to follow him. What are the people who are coming on this channel who are being combative to your teacher? What do they have behind their belt? I've been teaching for over two years. Before that, I was teaching in the church. Before that, I was preaching in the streets. Before that, I was serving under the highest level of ministry. And I went to Bible school. What have they done? I go and visit their channel. And the ones who are coming with their understanding, which wherever it's coming from, I believe it's coming from just watching other people's videos. They want to tell me how to teach. And they know nothing. They have no credentials under their belt. They've never done any work whatsoever. And yet, they come here to teach me. Incomes. Those who have been sealed in their foreheads those who are Yahuwah's servants. And if you're on this channel and you're one of Yahuwah's servants, I give you permission right now to address these issues. When these people come and attack your leader, I allow you to put them in their place. Teach them. You can't come here disrespecting our more it will not go well for you if you allow them to do so if I am vexed I can no longer produce and the only reason that they're coming after me with just silly things is because they have no knowledge whatsoever so I don't want to take my time trying to teach people who cannot be taught. I will leave that to you. Maybe you will have more of an effect on them than I will. Now, brothers and sisters, we're living in the last days, and it's time for all of us to put up or shut up. We have to do the work. It's the only way for our brothers and sisters to be saved. You see that we're dying every day. We must introduce this truth to them. It is their salvation. Peace be unto you, brothers and sisters. Protect yourselves. Shalom.